Hey you guys, welcome back to My Table 3. My name is Carrie and I'm glad to have you in my kitchen today. Um, today is, I believe, December the 1st. Can you believe it? I cannot believe it. It's gone so fast. Um, seems like November went even faster than the rest of the year. <clears throat> um, but I'm going to do some meal prep, meal prep today. And if I sound awful today, I do apologize. I'm still recovering. I don't know if you watch my green bean casserole um, slow kicker video. If not, <clears throat> I may try and put it up here or up here, whichever where it is. So you can go back and watch that. Um, but I wasn't feeling good then. That was probably the Sunday before Thanksgiving. I woke up the couple of days before not feeling good and I just got silly worse and have been sick ever since. So going on day 10, 11 or 12, but much better today. So yesterday and today, I've been prepping some food for us, getting some stuff in the refrigerator so I can just cook a little bit and then we can eat on it for the week uh, for several days. So I thought I would take you along with me. Now I did start taking, uh, I did start cooking yesterday, which we're going to jump backwards here in a moment. But yesterday I still felt <clears throat> not so great and I looked even worse because I did not even get dressed for the last week or two because we've been mainly home and anyway i won't bore you with all that but today i feel better i have my list of things that i'm going to prep that you can't see but i'll read them off to you yesterday i did jump in i did a couple things yesterday i'm going to insert that in just a minute and then we'll jump back to today and show you what i'm doing today so um i'm going to do roasted vegetables with like a big sheet pan sugar snap peas you'll see um like an asian sesame glaze i, I really like those um i prepped tuna you won't see that in the video because yesterday i prepped it and then uh, we just ended up having that for dinner, so I would have an easy um, meal for us. So today we're going to be working on have um, like gold potatoes back here in the Instapot. If you're not familiar with um, gold potatoes on Trim Healthy Mama, they are now allowed um, in an E setting, so that means keep it low fat. Um, we were blessed with um, some potatoes. Uh, actually several potatoes over the last few days but anyway so i have some of those in this instant pot here i'm going to make a um dairy-free potato soup and i probably will add shrimp after it's done because their shrimp are already cooked we like like shrimp chowder uh, but it'll be dairy-free and that will eat on that anyway i'm dragging and running off on rabbit trails but um i am going to prep a lot of sweet potatoes you'll see where i got a lot of sweet potatoes so i'm going to roast up some i will probably chop some up and peel those you'll see those later today and freeze those and i'm going to do some french toast i will do some with um if i get to it i'll do some uh trim healthy mama e on sprouted bread uh, but i know that i have some of the sara lee um 45 calorie white it has only six net carbs i will uh, nate really likes this so i'm gonna uh, make probably about a loaf and a half maybe a loaf of this in french toast because i have some um fresh chicken eggs that are building up on us so i'm going to use those i'm going to show you how i cook those um and freeze those so and they're really easy to pull up on thanksgiving morning was it thanksgiving morning nate maybe not yes one of the days <laughs> during the sickness it all runs together but one of the days i was able to just pull that french toast some french toast that i already had previously prepped out of the refrigerator and it made a really good special breakfast for us and i didn't have to do much I just pulled it out of the freezer, laid it on the sheet pan, put it in the oven, and then we just ate it afterwards. So, still wasn't feeling that good day, but I was still able to give them um, a healthy breakfast. It was also a treat because it was French toast. So, let's jump back to the clip from yesterday. It's not a lot from yesterday because I was still, I'm still getting tired really fast, and you'll hear that in the video. But, yeah, we'll jump and see that little um, clip. Then we'll come back in a few minutes, and I will show you what we're going to do today. So, I'll see you yesterday for now. Okay, so the first thing I'm doing is prepping a massive um, pan of vegetables that I am going to roast. On this pan, uh, we love to have these over salad for lunches or just as side dishes. Um, and this one I have some Brussels sprouts. I just cut the bottom off and have them. Um, large red onion, a bag of baby carrots, and I have a red and orange bell pepper that I need to use up. I also have... Two jalapenos that I need to use up. I ordered <laughs> uh, what I thought was one at Walmart pickup or a couple and I ended up with like 
12 somehow. So I used some of these in a cranberry relish that I did over the Thanksgiving weekend. And I'm going to use these probably in here. They're not hot at all. We were shocked that they're mainly like bell pepper. So maybe a tiny bit of heat in the seeds. But I'm going to scrape most of those out. And then just throw on there to use them up. I use um, avocado, avocado oil to season. And then I'll put salt, pepper, garlic powder, black pepper, and nutritional yeast. Tossed it and I'm going to roast it at 400 degrees until everything's tender. If I'm out of breath, guys, I'm still recovering. I've been so sick for the last 12 days. So mainly over the rough parts, I'm just still get out of breath easy and get exhausted easy. But today I've got to get stuff done like some meal prep you're going to see me doing. So I thought I'd pull out the camera and do that. So I'm going to toss this, get it in the oven, and then I'll show you what I'm doing next. Okay, so I was prepping. Um, I just put the vegetables in and Anthony um, came home with... Um, we, our friend that always gives us stuff left over um, or that she gets extra I called and asked him to run down there and this is what she gave him. I thought I'd show you guys real quick. This is a huge <laughs> gallon thing of uh, Hellman's Real Mayonnaise. Let's see. Um, this, Yeah, this is blue cheese dressing, which I'm not a fan of blue cheese dressing. Um, so we'll probably, Anthony eats it a little bit, but we'll probably share... Um, some of this for sure with somebody else. Nathan's super excited about this. There are two cases, basically eight pints of the haagen cookies and cream, which it looks excellent. And so this is not something we would definitely buy. Looks like it is good until uh, January of 22. So You'll definitely be working on that. We'll put that straight into our freezer. And then we got three bundles of asparagus, which um, they'll need to be eaten pretty quickly. So I'll probably roast these tomorrow or maybe roast them in our veg um, I prepped today and tomorrow. And then we can eat on that. Um, there are four, I don't know, buy potatoes enough to know. Okay, three pounds of Idaho potatoes. I will probably just shred these and dehydrate them and put them in the um, cover for long time storage. It looks like about, I don't know, these look like three or five pounds of sweet potatoes, two of those, and these definitely need to be used pretty quick. So I'm probably going to blanch some and freeze them, uh, dehydrate, cube some, blanch them, and do that. And I'll show you guys maybe how I do that, depending on how I hold up. <clears throat> and then one thing I'm really excited about is the snap peas. She gave us, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eight nine bags of these snap peas and they're they're kind of expensive i like them every once in a while i get them to go on my salad and stuff um i don't eat a ton of them because even though i like them they can be a little bit more carby than regular vegetables so if you may want to watch that if they mind it but i don't mind using these up i'll find some kind of use for them other than salads um i don't know so maybe i'll freeze some for vegetables but if you have any idea of what you could do with sugar snap peas uh, comment below and so that's just a really quick look into some extra things that we got blessed with that will go a long ways as far as food storage and and meals so yeah and treats for Nate which he's super excited about right Nate he's gone sorry <laughs> all right let's jump put this away and jump back into food planning looks like I gotta add a little bit more to my list of what needs to be done now but definitely blessed all right so I pulled the vegetables out of the oven they roasted at 400 degrees for about 50 minutes or so just so the tender carrots are tender i forgot to tell you i put like a tablespoon of oil on there so this could be easily a trim healthy mama e side since it's got the carrots or you know it's pretty low fat because i only use a little bit of oil a lot of seasoning so that'll be super yummy i will let that go ahead and cool and then i will put that in a container and put it in the fridge since I'm adding these two things to my prep today, I'm going to saute these, make them uh, snap peas, like a sesame, garlic, ginger kind of saute, and I'll put those in the um, refrigerator for a S side as well. Also gonna go ahead, I'll show you how to do this in a minute. I gotta wash it still. These have been washed, I picked through, this is about four bags, four or five bags. I picked through the bad ones and fed those to the chickens. Correction, Anthony took those out to the chickens for me, went along with the other scraps I had. So the next thing I'm going to do is wash these and get the hard parts off and I'll come back and show you how I prep those. I probably will not cook these today, but I'm definitely going to cook these and I'll prep these and I'll show you in just a little bit. 
I'm going to take a break and just take um, a quick rest uh, for a little bit and I'll be back in a little bit and show you what I've done so far. Alright guys, so I'm about to finish the asparagus prep. Here's what I've done so far. I have washed it all really well and cut off the hard woody spar um, parts. Today I just left them in a bundle, washed them, then just used a big knife and cut the ends off. You can always snap on one by one so you don't waste the asparagus, but I just chopped them today. I'm going to drop them in this plastic Ziploc bag. It is one I'm reusing. I do reuse them when I can to save on cost and waste. And I'm just going to um, drop this in there like that. You could do this depending on how much your family will eat. We will eat all these three bundles over the next several days. A couple days, probably maybe even one day depending on how much I feel like cooking. But I just drop that in there. Nathan, you can play it. I can't hear it in here, so you're good. So once I get my asparagus in the bag like this. Now, I'm not going to freeze this. I do not like um, the texture of that. It's okay, but I like it roasted fresh. So I'm just going to take some avocado oil here, and I'm going to put probably about a tablespoon and a half. I don't know, maybe two tablespoons, depending on whatever you want to use. There we go. Just a little bit in there. And I, then I'm going to kind of close it and toss it a little bit. This is basically going to be for a roasted asparagus. We love roasted asparagus the best. Um, uh, so I do this a lot with roasted asparagus and we were hand handing it a little bit so I'm excited that I got these three from um, our friend and so after I get it tossed and everything is covered in the oil um, I'm going to use spices here I use the same old spices in most of my cooking garlic powder, onion powder, salt, pepper and nutritional yeast of course, you can change that. You can put some lemon in here. Some lemon pepper would be good if you like that flavor profile. But basically, any kind of season you want or you like on your asparagus, you can put it on there. Okay, so first I'm going to put half the seasoning and toss it a little bit more. And I'm trying to you know, get some of every piece of asparagus. Okay, and then I'll go ahead and put the rest of the seasoning in and toss it again. And then I will seal this up real good, make sure all the air is out, and I will put it in the refrigerator and tomorrow um, or the next day um, I can just throw it in the oven and roast it up and we'll have a side. Or if I'm busy doing it and Anthony wants to, he can throw it in and help us get it started. So just as easy as that. It's really flavorful. It is uh, keto friendly, low carb friendly. And if you're a trim healthy mama, because I put the um, avocado oil on here, um, you can count this as an S. You can also put Parmesan cheese on here. <coughs> Excuse me guys, sorry, sorry. Um, Parmesan cheese on here. However, I would probably not put it in the bag. I would roast um, this part of the way through and then sprinkle it with the Parmesan cheese and then finish it off because the cheese will burn and it also gets kind of gross and yucky in here. And you don't want that burnt flavor on your asparagus. So that's how I'm going to do it. And that's how I would do the Parmesan cheese if we were doing it. But we're not eating cheese right now. So um, I won't put Parmesan on this. That's why I use the nutritional yeast, um, which I've showed you guys before. I buy in bulk and keep in these. Uh, little containers that I got at the Dollar Tree years ago and because we go through a lot of this I keep this in my pantry and some in my backup pantry so very good for you full of B vitamins not real active yeast it's just a flavor it's a um, bright orange color many of you that follow Trim Healthy Mama probably know about it but if you follow keto you should look into it it's got great B vitamins in it good stuff tastes good cheesy nutty without having dairy or cheese so that's it I'm going to stop rambling about this and I'm going to move on to my next thing. So I'll be right back. Okay, so that is what I did yesterday. You guys seen that. So not a whole lot. The so majority of it is going to be done today. So I am just finishing up these potatoes that I talked to you about earlier to make that um, shrimp and potato chowder. 
um, to season it up. So give me just a second. I got some um, grain-free, low-carb keto granola on the stove. I'm going to show you about it. I just prepped it for the oven and some sweet potatoes. And thankfully, Anthony is over there <laughs> peeling more. Say, say hi, Nate. Anthony, you're on camera. Hi, Nate. <laughs> hi, Nate. Can you say hi, Anthony? <laughs> hi, Anthony. Anyway, they hate being on camera, so they hate it when I do that. But anyway, I'm going to add some parsley to this. I added a little bit more um, salt and pepper. Um, I added a can of the light coconut milk. And I'm going to add more nutritional yeast. I'll see if I can get you guys down here just so you can see what it looks like. Um, of course, I'm blocking you right now, but... Um, again, I told you I use this nutritional yeast and a lot of stuff, and I love it in um, soups, especially if you're doing like a cauliflower soup or even a gold potato soup like this. You can really flavor it up and give it a cheese flavor. I'm going to clean this up without any extra um, fat or calories. So a crossover. So there we go. That is ready for lunch. Like I said, I am just going to um, probably... Um, um, get some shrimp out of the freezer and all that and I'll just toss that in <clears throat> About 10 minutes before we eat. It's not fully cooked in the refrigerator um, shelled tail off deveined all that and this will be our um, dinner today and I'll Push it over there and leftovers if there are any so I'm sure there will be so I'll also like I said Anthony is working on more sweet potatoes, but let me show you what's about to go into the oven right now. I'm going to turn you around. So right here is my grain-free granola. I have this recipe on my blog. I got some, and um, I've had it. It's one of my ones that I've done really, I don't know, really pretty early on. It was one of my first, um, move you guys around just a little bit. Sorry, so you can get a good angle. Let's see. If you guys are crooked, I'm sorry, but that should be good. Anyway, this one here, <clears throat> I didn't have, I had like a half a bag of this um, unsweetened coconut flakes. I like the little fine sweet, but I also like the big ones when I can get it. But this is what I had in my pantry, so this is what I use. Uh, you can find the recipe link. To, I'll put it in the description below, and you can find how much. Today, I dumped in, <laughs> dump and go. I had gotten these two things of pecan somewhere, probably one of my discount grocery stores for 85 cents each and these both have a half a cup in them so what I did was I just actually opened these up and throw them in there my original recipe I used sliced almonds I have those I wanted to use up those pecans out of the freezer so and then I flavored that with some Splenda monk fruit this is basically just monk fruit extract and, and erythritol um, some salt a little bit of coconut oil and some ground cinnamon Tossed it together, and then this is going to go to the oven and roast. I'm going to start it at three, uh, 375 today because I'm also putting these sweet potatoes in with it. But I'm going to stand really close and watch this because this will cook really quickly, long, long before this is done. This will have burnt up. So I'll show you that when it comes out. These I flavored um, with salt, some cinnamon, lime juice. I'm going to put... Um, I did not grab it, but I have some cilantro still out doing well in my herb garden. So I have a recipe called cilantro lime sweet potatoes. It's one of my favorites. It's kind of the savory, savory application of sweet potatoes. This is a little bit sweeter. I did put some a tiny bit of the monk fruit, probably maybe a tablespoon or so, um, cinnamon and some lime juice, salt and pepper. And I'm gonna roast these just plain. Um, and then I'm gonna show you in a few minutes. Let me show you how I put those in, and then I will. The oven right now is on 375. When I get the granola out, I'll probably crank it up to 400. But let me go ahead and do that. And that is parchment paper under the granola. So what I'll probably do, let me back you up some, sorry. Woo, close up. So what I'll do is when Anthony finishes those um, sweet potatoes, I am going to chop them up really good into pieces and I'm gonna do those in freezer bags and I will do some of those with the cilantro lime seasoning so we'll have a savory application and I'll show you those when I get ready. Uh, I'm not gonna do all the chopping and obviously he's doing my peeling um, on camera <clears throat> because I don't want to make this video extremely long but when I come back and get ready to put those freezer bags together I'll jump back and show you. I will show you um, also the granola when it comes out and when it cools 
um, completely cools. Come out of the oven, let it cool completely. You can even take it off the baking sheet, set it aside. Um, I will sprinkle in some of these Lily's No Sugar Added Chocolate Chips. You could do whatever your family likes. If you have like some No Sugar Added Dried Cranberries, that would be excellent in there. Um, anything. If you're making it for your kids and they're not from Healthy Mama, you're just trying to watch their sugar intake, you could do um, maybe No Sugar Added Free Dried to, uh, Bananas. Whatever you want. Just any kind of thing would be wonderful. So I'll show you when that comes out. You just store it in an airtight container and it'll last you a few weeks. If it lasts that long. It doesn't here because we eat it like a snack or cereal. So I am going to take a rest for a few minutes while Anthony does that. And then I'll be back and I'll show you everything and how it's going right now. Okay? Peppermint tea. So... <clears throat> I have I'm taking, taking a break. We have eaten dinner. I've rested a little bit. A couple of things are done. The um, granola I showed you earlier and the sweet potatoes I roasted. <coughs> granola took me 12 minutes and I did watch it very closely. Every once in a while I would open, I'd say every four or five minutes, I would open the door and stir it. It's best if you could do that alone and just watch it really clear, especially if you're doing a bigger batch. You can stir it and let the, the, um, Sorry, it helps my throat. <clears throat> if you could watch it. If you're doing a double batch, you want to stir it so all the coconut and the nuts roast evenly and some of the ones on the top do not burn because nothing to me tastes worse than burned nuts. They're really bitter and just gross. So, um, the only thing that's left for that, I'll show you in a moment. Actually, let me show you now. Can you see that? So, you can see how nice and golden brown that is. And I broke it up. It's been cooling for a while. Um, you can break it up until it's really fine shreds. Or you can make it into cubes like that. Or pieces, chunks. Whatever you want to call it. This has actually been cooling. You can see I put my hand fully on the pan. It's a little bit of residual heat. So if I wanted to, I could go ahead and take this off. Um, and toss in the chocolate chips. Um, I would actually put it in a bowl. Toss it with some chocolate chips. And then put it in a... Um, airtight container. I like to store mine in mason jars, the wide mouth glass jars that um, you know you can twist the lid on. But if you have some great Rubbermaid um, sealable, you know, airtight containers, you can do that. So this is done. I'm just going to add the chocolate chips to that. I'll put the <clears throat> remember the recipe below. Sorry guys, it's getting later in the day. It's about 1:09 here, and what energy reserve I had today is about gone, and so is my voice. But <clears throat> anyway. I'll put the recipe to my granola down in the bottom down here of the video so you'll be able to see that. And then here are the, just the roasted sweet potatoes. Remember I just put a little bit of lime juice, salt, uh, cinnamon, a little bit of monk fruit, and a tablespoon of oil. And we'll just eat these as a side through the week. Um, they're just really nice and toasty brown and caramelized, so really soft. So these are going to be really good. So now I'm going to show you how I do. Back it up and whoops, sorry. Got to be a little too close and personal, right? Let me get it down here. I'm going to show you now how I do my cilantro lime sweet potatoes. Give me just a second. I had to change shirt because I got hot and was sweating in the other one, <coughs> which is a good sign, right? Because if you're sweating, and you're hot, there's no fever. So that's always really great. I'm gonna put my apron on here really quick. And so these are my cilantro um, lime sweet potatoes. This is the way that we like to eat savory sweet potatoes. They're a Trim Healthy Mama E. They're also on my blog, which I'll link the, the recipe description below. Oh, one more tea. Let me show you this tea. This is one of my favorites. Um, during the holidays, I get it from Aldi. Help if I turn it around, wouldn't it? <laughs> oh my word. Okay, there you go. Candy cane tea, Aldi. I think it's under two dollars. There are good grief, 20 bags. And I'm gonna get some more when I go because I'll stock up. They only have the peppermint during the holiday Christmas season, so I like to get it. I love peppermint tea, and that's one of my favorites. Also, before we do this, let me show you another one of my most favorite things in the world. And my dear, dear beloved husband got it for me <clears throat> for Mother's Day last year. And it's such a help. It is. Can you see that? Probably not with the granola. 
it is a Kasori mug warmer and you just set your cup on it and you can set it to how what temp you want to keep it on and this keeps your tea your coffee whatever hot so i used to use this a lot i can stop talking to my hand now right when i worked um for hilton on the phones because it would i'd like to have coffee all day <clears throat> but i didn't like cold coffee but sometimes as a mom or a busy person you get used to drinking cold coffee because you pour yourself a cup and all this happens right but anyway so now let me show you those sweet potatoes because I only have a little bit more energy today and we're going to do the French toast because I know I've promised it. So here we go. So the cilantro lime, I wish I had some of those handy dandy clippy things like Jamarelle and Kimmy at Caesar in her apron. Apron uses, you know, the ones uh, that holds your plastic bags. I just put the name of the cilantro lime sweet potatoes. You can put what degree you cook the oven in and all that and you can get it from the recipe below, but I do it so often. I don't need all that, so I'm going to put, divide the sweet potatoes, and I just have my bag in this, my mixer bowl to hold it open for me. So, can you see, hopefully you can't, yeah, okay, so let me move it over this way. So basically, I'm just dividing the sweet potatoes between the bags. Here's that one. I'm going to open this other one. Yeah, we're a family of three, so this is a good size for us when I bake them. If you're a larger family, or, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you could double these in the bags. Um, you can also, um, if you're like only one or two of you, like you and your husband, or just you and a roommate, or just you, you could make these in quart size bags. So, um, that way you would have single portions to pull out and roast. Excuse me. <coughs> I'm so sorry. Okay, so there are the potatoes in the bag. So now I'm going to make, um, put the lime juice and the other flavorings in them. So I'm going to measure first. I'm going to put avocado oil. All the measurements are in the uh, recipe link below. So I wouldn't trust myself right now to give you these. Matter of fact, I even had to pull up my <laughs> phone earlier for my blog to make sure I could see everything and tell you the right thing. So the next thing I'm going to do is lime juice. And I just have some limes that I've cut in half. If you don't have limes, whoops, use the lime juice out of the bottle, right? Whatever works for you. Okay, and I'm just going to squeeze these in. You know, if you don't want to put the oil in... You can always just do the lime juice, and I'm doing about a lime in each bag. And you can put them in the oven and cook them at the temperature the recipe below says. And then you can make sure they get soft. Why am I doing that? You guys, I have a thing. And then you can put them in your air fryer. And um, you can put them in your air fryer and then totally crisp them up with just some spray. So, I also have a rosemary, rosemary lemon butternut squash that's excellent. And that is also on the blog. Primitive Mama shared that Sunday, I think, on their website. Yeah, this thing is so much easier. Duh, Carrie. Right? Do you ever do that? Get these little gadgets to use and then you forget you have them. That's excellent, right? Okay, so there's that. I'm going to do salt. Salt. You can salt and pepper to your own taste. Let me grab the pepper and they had it earlier. <clears throat> I'm just going to shakey shake. You can measure if you like. Follow the direction. I think it says one four teaspoon. Okay, so there's that. The next thing I need, I'm going to set these aside for a moment. It's going to be cilantro. Nancy was gracious enough to go and me some out of the herb garden so let me get a knife to cut that up <clears throat> okay and the measurements are below I can't remember I think it says two tablespoons but you could use as much or as little as you like you could always use dry cilantro if you don't have fresh. 
fresh is really easy to grow. Okay, so if you don't use, say you don't use fresh and you want to use your dry, the rule of thumb I've heard is always, actually I just heard it again yesterday from Steve over at Sirius Keto, is that your dryer spices are going to be more, they're going to be stronger basically, okay, because they're concentrated, dried, and then, so you would only use probably a third, where this calls for two tablespoons, you can use a third of that. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and put that in. I think I put too much in that one, so I'm going to pull some out. Put some in. Okay. And so that's it. I will basically just toss this together, flatten it out, put it in my freezer to freeze. And when we get ready to have those, we'll pull them out. I will let them defrost, and then I'll put them on a pan and roast them up. So that is that. I am about to... Um, oh, I was going to tell you some. You can also add like say onions or even a jalapeno to that if you want to spice it up. I'm just going to do it like that. Okay, so I am going to make some singing canary now, not on camera because you guys have probably seen other bloggers and you've made it a hundred times, but I'm going to go ahead and make that. <clears throat> and then I'm going to come back and show you the last thing I'm going to show you today because I know this video is probably already way too long. I see this part is 10 minutes, but I'm going to show you the French toast really quick. Um, I may just make it and then show you how I freeze it. How's that to shorten it? So. I'll be right back with that. Okay guys, so I have rethought this whole video and it's looking like it's already um, probably going to be over 20 minutes long and I don't want to hold anybody up. I know everybody's busy and you know, I, I know people don't watch longer videos here on my channel just from what my stats say. So I am going to stop there for the day. I'm also tired so I think I'm going to spend some time um, reading and uh, I'm going to the very next video that goes out <clears throat> after this one this one will probably come out Thursday or Friday of this week so or the second or third of December and then the very next one that I put out I promise you will be prepping breakfast so we'll do the French toast maybe some egg burrito something like that for the freezer but I'm gonna go ahead and end there but before I do I wanted to tell you about this book Debbie Johnson's cook code i don't know if it's backwards for you but if it is i'm sorry i don't think it is but um so this is a book that i'm currently going to i got in the mail yesterday it's a sponsored tour i'm gonna do a full book review on my blog i haven't read it yet i don't typically do book reviews here but if you guys would like to see something like that you can always let me know and i may consider that but the reason i wanted to show you this is that um it is a new book it's coming out just this month it, you can get it in time for christmas i believe um it's from the author, if you can see, Erica Venich, I believe. But this is a historical fiction. It is Christian fiction. Um, so if that's something you like, they are currently giving a, a giveaway. I don't sponsor the giveaway. I'm not even a part of the giveaway. Just the company, the Read With Otter, that I do my book reviews through um, is hosting it. So I want to put that link below if you're interested in Christian fiction um, and historical um, books. This one is about a, a young lady whose parents... She finds out, it says that they were living a double life um, as spies or agents or something. She takes over, and of course, I'm sure there's a romance in there somewhere, but Christian Historical Fiction, I'll put the link below if you're interested in signing up um, for their giveaway. It goes from now to December 17th, 2021. If you're watching this after that date, then I'm sorry, it's already closed, but go ahead and jump over if you're interested in getting your copy. And then I will see you next time on our breakfast prep video. And thanks for being in the kitchen today. I'll see you later. I can't turn off the camera. <laughs>